Two, so okay, we're live now. Thank you. Right, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Lowestock Town Council's meeting of the Climate and Ecological Emergency Committee today on 19th of June, 2023. Just to welcome uh, some housekeeping first. Good afternoon, and there are no fire alarm tests planned for this afternoon, so should the fire alarm sound, it will be for real. In the event of a fire, please follow the instructions that will be given and congregate at the fire assembly point on the grass verge in front of the quick building. The fire exits are the main flight of stairs and the flight of stairs from the kitchen. Ah, hello, Rachel. In the interest of openness and transparency, councillors and members of the public are reminded that the law permits any person to film, record, photograph or use social media in order to report on the proceedings of a meeting of the council or its committees when they're open to the public. The town council will record this meeting. Filming and photography will only be permitted in the area designated. No flash photography or additional lighting shall be used without prior consent. Anyone wishing to report on the meeting should notify the clerk or the chair so they can be afforded reasonable facilities. People under the age of 18 or other members of the public not wishing to be filmed or photographed should notify the clerk or the chair and should sit in the area designated for this purpose. Improper conduct or any disruptive behaviour could result in expulsion from the meeting. Hello, Chair. Can you also ensure that your mobile phones like Wendy, I've just switched off the test cricket. I'll change to silent or switched off and adhere to the non-smoking policy for this building and the grounds of Hamilton House. Thank you. So just to explain who's here, I know we've had um apologies, well, I'll come to that in a minute. Um so going around the table from this way, that's it. I'm here, that's Paul Page. We've got Wendy Brooks, Debbie Ray, and Janet Craig. John Sillett, uh, Rachel Bunn, Sonia Barker, uh, who are on the committee, and also we have from officers of the council, we have um, Lauren Elliott, who is our project clerk, and also we have um, Taylor Williams, who's committee clerk today, I think. I don't know which way around you're doing it. It's all right. <laughs> Thank you. Do we, do we vote on accepting apologies? I'm done apologies, yeah. What to vote? <laughs> do we have any apologies? I, I know I've had, personally, I've seen apologies from Graham Parker, and yes, I've had apologies, them. personal apologies, just been handed to me from Andy. Oh, yes, Jack, just those two apologies. Just those two? Yeah. So, um, go on, to accept. Yeah, and I'll second that. Oh, yeah. Vote on that, please. That's everybody, thank you. Yeah, when I saw you uh, first, like Rachel, I thought you said you were going to be here today. So <laughs> well, I know, I don't know how you did it. Yeah. You had a lot of people through your tent. Um, I'm sure we'll have time to talk about that. Okay, 22, declarations of interest and dispensations. Um, 22.1, to receive declarations of dis disclosable pecuniary interests and other registrable and non-registrable interests from councillors. Wendy. 32, because I've been involved with the bulky waste environment and waste group, and 29, I think I've got them in the right order. Oh no, that's 29. And 32, because why? A bottle. There's some reason, and I've forgotten what it is. Water bottles? Oh, yes, yeah. because I'm part of, uh, I'm currently the rep at Low Soft Vision who have actually advertised mm. it. Mm. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, anybody else? Uh, Debbie? Um, 35, I was involved with the climate change murals. So I was on the um, design work groups. So. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, yeah. Janet. Oh, sorry, I was oh, just going right. Sorry. Oh, I was going right. Janet. 
Um, I have been involved with the environment waste group, and also I'm not sure if I need to declare on any separate council. Yeah, people normally say that. Yeah, thank you, Janet. Are you still on that committee then? The well, I haven't been to one for a while, but I haven't. Well, I'm on the committee, and I've been to one meeting ever. Uh, right. Well, the, can I explain? <laughs> right. The this meeting. Is has, was postponed and it was largely due to his other councillors deciding that he needed to work out what their attitude to me was. So therefore I decided to cancel the next meeting because it wasn't my, we've got the bulky waste thing, yeah. that's going through Lower Sub Town Council. Um, I'm not even sure that we need that particular group because I think now if East Suffolk Councillors are involved, it was always set up to be cross council. Okay. If we can't have and I see on the agenda, there is ideas of making strong links with the new East Suffolk yeah. administration, which potentially would be a better forum anyway, rather than a, you know. Okay. Maybe we'll come to that a bit later, yeah. Janet. Well, originally, Suffolk County councillors uh, were involved, right? They haven't, none of them have been for a very long time. I don't no, know. No, James Reader. Oh, has he? Maybe he's been. And he's been no, he's, been, he's been, he's been there. He's oh, been in the, in okay. the. In, he's been doing his stuff and contributing okay. positively. Thank you, Wendy. Well, it's obviously something we want to see working well. John, did you have anything? No, no. Rachel, Sonia, get I got round to you. That's all right. Number thirty-two. Um, I wanted to mention something on that from my experience being a volunteer over the weekend, uh, and because I'm on the first line, last of town council, I'm a steering group rep for first light, but. I'll declare the first light interest if you like. Yeah. Item 37 as well. I'm Suffolk Wildlife Trust person because it's to do with the kitty wakes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Very much. Right. We'll move on to um, 23 then. Oh, that is that was 21.1 and 21.2. Consider any written requests for dispensations as we've got no written requests for anybody. No, no, thank you. Uh, 23 then, to consider the draft minutes of the meeting on the 25th of May. She moved for the yes, Wendy. Propose we approve. Okay. Right. Anybody like to second that rather than me? Or? Yeah, I'll second. Yeah. Thank you, Sonia. Should we have a vote on those minutes then, please? Thank you. That's everybody. You're approved. Thank you. 24, public forum. Uh, do we have any? Uh, Anything from the public? Any advanced comments from the public? No advanced comments. Uh, no one's on the webinar. Oh, I'm missing Richard. He hasn't been for a while. Oh, he did come last time. Oh, did he? Yeah, oh, he was here. He may come later. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. He might not be able. Oh, no, if he presses the bell, Chris is on the desk. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, 25, to monitor the expenditure by this committee from the climate emergency budget under delegated authority. Can I just mention here that obviously some of the budget for the bulky waste is coming from the climate yeah. emergency budget. And I'm wondering if that's been factored in yet. I think it was originally. But maybe, I mean, the money is there, but. Yeah, it looks um, like it's been 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 in, so we've also got our own um, waste disposal bin emptying as well, um, and um, the kitty wake measures at the Marina Theatre as well, which will be coming from this budget. So, yeah, but bulky waste has been factored in. Yeah. Thank you. Nothing else we need to look at regarding recent spending? Well, no, no, that will obviously continue to be reviewed. I mean, uh, uh, F&G has oversight over yeah. the, the budgets. Yeah. And that gets That's right. I've, I've, I've seen well, it there. So. Yeah, thank you. Right, then we'll move on to 26. To receive the notes of the standalone Zoom meeting on the 8th of June and consider the following. 26.1, the adoption of a new agenda format. Now, Andy has sent a, me a message about that, saying what he didn't think we were using it yet, but I thought the idea is we had to vote formally. Well, we, we can't. The standalone Zoom meeting couldn't make the decision. No, we have to vote. Here. We have, so we have to vote here, but yeah. there were two options, and I think all of us agreed, didn't we, Deborah? Yeah. The yeah. second option yeah. 
Yeah. And you agree with that as yeah. well? Yeah. How was it, Lizzie? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I propose we approve it. Yeah. What, yeah, it was the one that says this example allows the agenda to be climate driven. Was that one? Yeah. 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 I propose we approve it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. second. Then Deborah second. So should we have a vote on that? I, yeah. I presume everybody knows what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's unanimous. That's everybody. Thank you. Uh, twenty six point two to formally accept the new escalation process to Councillor Caroline Topping, East Suffolk Council. What does it mean? I don't quite know what that means. I don't know either. <laughs> Didn't um, I don't know who's put it on the agenda. Because... Was that something from the Zoom though? No. I mean, I think we what we felt was that the new administration would be much more sympathetic yeah. to this committee. We said that. But I don't know what the new escalation actually is. No. Can what do I you say, I think there's been a Sonia. mistake here. It was not Caroline Topping. She's leader of the East Suffolk Council. It was the cabinet member. Ah. Oh. It was the That's cabinet very... member for uh, the environment. That, yeah. that we we that was what who we were going to make contact with Rachel um, uh, Smith Light. Yeah, yeah, that was her rather than Caroline Topping. Yeah, that I so I think there's okay. been a a, a mud, well Sorry. I because I, I I was at the meeting last meeting and, and it, it was definitely were you at the Zoom meeting? Sonia? I wasn't at the Zoom. No, the Zoom meeting was slightly different. Right, Janet. Well, well I was at the Zoom meeting, and if my memory serves me right. correctly, I I seem to recall. Um, someone's, I can't remember who it was, saying that Carol, or the leader of the council, Cal, oh, uh, in this case, case. Caroline Tuffy, is the point of contact to liaise with all parish mm -hmm. and town councils. That's I, right. I, I oh, that's that's that wasn't okay. said in that meeting, Janet. Well, that must have been in some, a different oh, meeting. Maybe a, Perhaps you heard oh, it said at, somewhere uh, recently. Yeah, that was I not think. at that meeting. I mean, I have nothing against us liaising with Caroline Topping, but no. I imagine being the leader, she's going to be pretty In busy, oh, very, so, very, yeah. very busy. And I'm surprised that somebody is saying that she's the lead person for all the parish councils, yeah, right. but that seems to me yeah. too much. Mm, Whereas I she... think what we mentioned in our Zoom meeting was Rachel smith light -Light yes. Smith, right. as being the person that we yeah. wanted to contact. Yeah. And well, we, Joe, the, yeah, the other thing was that at the meeting four weeks ago, we said that to get in kind of early before she, before she mm. got in undated with requests. Yeah. This Rachel's... Yeah, uh, Debbie. Like um, in the uh, minutes of the standalone Zoom meeting on the 8th of June, it does say um, escalation items where feedback was received from Councillor Amanda would instead be escalated to Councillor Caroline Topley. Ah, oh, yes, yes. That's, that's, that's where it came. From. That's a misunderstanding because we were originally in the original minutes and the original our liaison was with James Mallinder, yes. who was the chair of um, the environment. Yeah, but, and that Cabinet. is now Rachel Smith-Light. Yeah, so that was the, it wasn't about escalation. Don't worry, Wendy, who made those minutes? I don't know, I haven't seen them. Who, who took notes at the, the Zoom meeting? Oh, uh, cool. uh, Taylor. Yeah, Taylor. Are they on the Taylor. members area, Taylor? Yeah. So the I first, forgot you were there. The previous climate meeting, it was Rachel who was mentioned. Yes, it was. That wanted to yeah. Meet yeah. With her. And then at the Zoom meeting, it was said because of it going to Caroline instead, we allocated to Cordomy instead of James Mander. But if we want to change it here so that it is Rachel who both the person. Send it to both. Yeah. 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 I, I think that I would at this point. Janet? I, I think possibly where the reason Caroline might have been mentioned was because although Rachel Smith lies is the cabinet member for the environment, yeah. there is also another cabinet member whose title is Energy and Climate Change, ah. which is, mm. I, I can't yeah. remember the person's name, it's Brand. I, I, I remember Rachel from before, but this is a, a brand new council. Yeah. I can't recall the name of. And then I think possibly there might be an, a possibility that they're going to create another position as well for something else to do with the environment. So I think that might have been why. Um, they said to, but I'm sure if you contact Rachel and it's not her, I'm sure she would say yeah. on forwarding. Yes. Yeah. Can I one. ask you a question about yourself, the council? Do they actually have a, a climate? Ecological Emergency no. Committee. No, they but they are thinking of forming one. Um, no, they've got a cabinet member whose title is for uh, no. energy and the uh, climate, no. energy and climate change. Okay, that's similar. 
I spoke Debbie. to one of the cabinet members yesterday and we discussed the fact that they should really have a climate yeah, emergency yeah. committee. Mm. And she said she would put that forward to whoever. Who was, was it? it? Who was it? Katie Graham. Okay. Katie, yeah, that is, yeah. Well, very, that's very that, then they have to, we can't tell you stuff like how to no, organize their own, no, vote, can she, we? It's up to them. Yeah, but she yeah, is no, considering but that. Let's focus, yes. Year. But there is a vehicle, isn't there, for dovetailing what we're doing and what they're doing in yes. a similar committee with similar objectives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I but in the East Suffolk is organized completely differently because they have a cabinet mm -hmm. and yes. then they have, they, you know, it's different. We know we're, we're not, and they sit in political groups. We don't sit in political no, groups technically, and we I don't have a cabinet. Saying, but we're all trying to make the environment better yes. around Lowestoft. We should, yeah, yeah, we should have. Yeah. Sorry, just to say, I, I think it's really important early on, as we mentioned at the last meeting here, not the Zoom because I didn't get onto that, that we we sort of raise and say we're doing these things mm. right from the start. Yeah. I've also spoken to a cabinet member. Um, that was last. Sunday. Um, um, and you know, he he was saying, Oh, yeah, we really want to make sure we liaise with us off town council is really important. So we need to get in there and make our presence felt. That's my view. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. When, yeah. yeah. Yes, I think we need to be good communication is really, really important. Mm. If we look later on in this agenda, we're talking about actually having somebody as a representative to join the other parishes in talking about mutual concerns. Mm. Um, I think I have actually emailed um, Rachel Lightsmith on a completely separate matter two weeks ago, and I'm still waiting for a reply. However, that doesn't mean that I think this committee can liaise with her or our staff can liaise with her, but um, we can't be dependent on them, is what I'm saying. Like, we mm. have to do our thing and mm. we can keep them informed. I'm more interested in us using this parish format mm. so that we're talking to the other parishes and let each stuff catch up. I know they're a new administration. Yeah. They know we're here. Mm. I know Caroline. She knows what I'm about. She knows what the town council is about. Mm. I think getting in early, I think we've made ourselves known to them. They know, mm -hmm. you know, Lowestoft's the largest town in, you know, East Suffolk. Mm -hmm. So, of course, they know about us. Yeah. But we have to use, if we want a response, I suggest that we use the office and we get our staff yeah. to contact their staff rather than us. I mean, as I say, two weeks, I'm still waiting for an answer. Yeah, but that, that, so it seems to be the biggest to East Suffolk. That's kind of what happens sometimes. <laughs> but I think, yeah, I get what you're saying. We won't stop what we're doing and driving forward what we think, our agenda, but yeah. to work alongside another council, that excites me. You know how yes. excited we got when we worked alongside what was going on in Woodbridge? We found out the things going on in Woodbridge yes. and it kind of thought, we could do that, we could do this. Yes. We had a bigger council working alongside us on environmental issues. It would be wonderful. That's what I think. Except yeah. when we tried to get in touch with them, they never got back to us. If you'd like to read item yes. 29 on the agenda, it does say, uh, ring out and raise matters with Caroline Toppy, yeah. and East Suburb Council leader, with responsibility for parish liaison. Yeah, that's the one that, yeah, uh, yeah. that's the bulky waste one. Well, I thought I had read it. Yeah. <laughs> so we are going to do that anyway. I'm reassured now of my own sanity. Yeah, you, you, you yeah. are saying. You, you yeah. are saying. Don't you worry about okay. that. Well, it? that takes us on then okay. to. Um, <laughs> do we need to make a vote on that then? So, Check then. Are what we are we voting on? process of it going to Caroline? Or do we yeah, this number is 26.2, Wendy, to formally accept the new escalation process. So, is it going to go to Caroline or is it going to go to uh, Rachel Smith Light? Or both. Or both. I suggest we should take a vote. I say both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are we all accepting a vote? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I reckon. But I propose both. Would somebody like to second that? I'll second that. Okay, well, should we vote? <laughs> That's everybody. So can we do that to both, please? Yeah. Hey, no. Thank you. Uh, and then 26.3 to recommend resuming quarterly meetings with East Suffolk Council. Again, I think this would be something I'd, I've never experienced that. But resume it from when? 
Wendy? I think this was actually something that happened, but it wasn't just from this committee. Oh. It was actually a full council thing. So, I mean, as, as a committee, it's not up to, we we can recommend it to full council that they we you know these meetings start happening again. They collapsed last time. Yeah, they did. Nobody would listen, and nobody would. They just fell out the people. But with the new administration, yeah. then it seems a sensible way forward. Yeah. And I would propose that we support this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and but it it can't. It's not from just the client. It's actually for the whole council. The whole council. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just to say, Sorry. I was yeah. aware that. Uh, before it was the chair of the council, I believe, um, and, and this was when I uh, first was elected on the council in 2021, it was literally a few weeks after May 2021 that they those meetings stopped yeah. for whatever reason, mm. and they weren't restarted. So, again, I totally agree that we should communicate and liaise and, um, you know, just offer to be... Mm. A good neighbour. Is it? Is it? Would we have time for this to go to on the full council agenda? Next we week. would, wouldn't it's we? Tomorrow the agenda goes out. So we could propose it today from yes. the climate emergency that they be it be looked at. Yeah, I propose that. Well, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe somebody else should propose it, and then it might get through. No, no. It's uh, true, Paul. <laughs> Well, would maybe if Sonia would like to propose yeah, it. Sonia, would you like to? Yeah, I'll propose that we we put feelers out. I think yeah. like a uh, yeah at uh, full council yeah. next week. And Debbie, you going to second that? Oh, I will. Oh, I'll, I'll, you I'll, want to? You want I think it's really um, yeah. personally. Yeah. I mean, just to say, and I know this isn't quite where we're at. I've now been to two civic uh, services, and one in Southwark and one down yesterday afternoon, Felix though. Uh, and both were really into working alongside, looking at common ground. You know, it's it's just been amazing. So I know, you know, you might say once, you know, you might be all for something on a sunny afternoon. But I it's, it see to me being really genuine that these, you know, other other um, chairs of other councils really would like to work more in collaboration with sorry it's only but so i think i think it's it's something yeah. it's kind of going on informally but we need to have a structure and that structure was there and it was a shame i think that for whatever reason it ended and i think we should definitely start mm -hmm. it up yeah mm -hmm. debbie and um, and if they do start a climate and ecological emergency committee then perhaps we could have Meetings with that committee. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Regular basis. Thank you. Yeah. Let me just say here that I think it's really interesting. Language is important, isn't it? And somehow, I don't know quite how this has happened, but I've heard this a lot on the radio recently. It's gone from climate emergency, because emergency equals we've got to do something right now yeah. before time runs out. Whereas climate change sounds far more gentle as though it's something like I've changed my blind colour. And it's so the language is mm. interesting. And yeah, I think it's a deliberate thing to downplay the whole panic. Who used the word change? Sorry. sorry. Well, it's it's across the media at the moment. They talk about oh. climate change. Because if you remember, it was proposed that we should uh, last year, I think, drop the word emergency from our committee and oh, really? uh, and I said we would not drop yes. the word emergency yes. I think it's an emergency yeah. it's an emergency yeah. yes yes and a um, crisis or something yeah. no we keep stick with emergency yeah. I because think it's there was, three, but I'm there was a decision by the climate yeah. skeptics and big oil companies mm -hmm. they wanted us to Sonia said take out the panic just downgrade it. It's called it climate change. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. And I, I find myself using climate change. And then I thought, I listened, I heard something about the, hang on, hang on. Yes. Don't use that phrase. It's, it's a so, climate emergency. Yeah, because yeah. what it is, emergency sounds like something unusual and out of the ordinary, whereas change sounds like something that happens naturally. Mm. Yeah. Well, it is happening naturally, but it's an emergency. Yeah. <laughs> it needs doing there. Yeah, anyway. Thank you. But I, uh, so did we... Did you uh, vote on that? Because so no, you proposed. I proposed so it. That we're going to, to take it full, full council. council. Yeah. And and you second it. Yeah. Do we have a vote on that then, please? Yeah. That's everybody. We voting Rachel. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's that's unanimous. Then. So that will appear on the agenda, full council. Yeah. Thank you. Good. 
27. Consider extending an invitation to <laughs> Councillor Caroline Topping or the Cabinet member on her behalf right. to meet with the Climate and Ecological Emergency Committee, either in person at a scheduled committee meeting or via a standalone Zoom meeting. Zoom meeting. Wendy. I suppose we agree to that. Yeah, so yeah, I understand it probably will be a Zoom meeting, but yeah. that'd be fine, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. I'd second that. I think we've all discussed it. So it's yeah. been proposed by Wendy, seconded by um, Sonia. Should anybody else want to comment on it or no? no. We're not going to be against it. <laughs> That's everybody then. Thank you. We're rattling through. 28. To note that the East Suffolk Cabinet member of the is now Rachel Smith Light. Yeah. No, <laughs> sorry. This, this meeting's coming a bit surreal. Not yes. again. Have we lost our identity? What has happened to us? Leave is. It's not the most surreal thing that's happened to me in the last two days. Um, okay, yeah, so, so we are, that's just to note, so that's fine. 29, to consider any matters to raise with <laughs> Caroline Topping, uh, East of the Council Leader with responsibility for parish liaison and or the Environment and Waste Group and to receive feedback on any matters previously raised. And I've got you in there, Wendy, penciled you in. Right. Um, okay. I think one of the things we need to raise urgently with the leader of East Suffolk Council, and they, at the end of June, they'll have their new body together, won't they? Their LATCO is the state of London Road North. It's filthy in our town. The slowness in picking up fly tipping. That, that in, where I live in Harbour, it is absolutely shocking. And the levels, it is getting worse and worse. And you report it and it's not moved. And that's changed. Did the uh, asbestos get cleared up? No, still there. You're kidding. That's still there. That's a health hazard. In the alleyway. That's a health and safety Of course hazard. it is. Everybody has been notified. All of them know. And the line from Norse is, well, it's on private land, but the private land is on an alleyway. You know, it's like a garage and yeah, there's a little yeah. bit of land. So they're saying, oh, but the... You know, children play there, everybody mm -hmm. plays there. Yes. I've alerted everybody and nothing has been done about that, about the pile of soil and bricks in the car park, the bite of being down the alleyway. They are not responding. I'm sorry about that because I thought they had been dealt with by now. Oh, no, 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 it's still there. I've look, you know, I've copied in all the harbour councillors and yeah. uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe Janet, you can pick it up with them. Sorry, Debbie. Can you see it? Previously, I I could contact North direct, although it, it, if it was something on private land, that they they still wouldn't have touched it. But now I can't go to North direct. I have to go via yes um, the yeah. environmental protection. Of, oh yeah, Ben Ablett is um, quite a senior member of that team, and he if if it's on private land, he has to contact. The landowner first to ask them to move it. If they won't, if, if it's something that's proving a health hazard, yeah. he then can move it and then charge the landowner for the removal of yes. it. But yes. he hasn't. But I know he has. I mean, he oh. hasn't done it. So where no, are we? I, no. So um, these are matters we need to raise, <laughs> not me. Oh, we do this, Debbie. Yeah. Two weeks ago, my black bins weren't empty. Neither was mine. Oh, really? And I reported it still hasn't been emptied. Ah, oh. well, I thought it was because there was fly tipping in the alleyway where I put my bin. And I thought perhaps the bin lorry couldn't get round there, which is why they didn't empty the bin. So oh. I don't know whether it'd be empty today. It'll be interesting to see. Tomorrow, mine's tomorrow. But mine, yeah. mine wasn't empty. I phoned up north. Oh. I was told, oh, we'll do it. And it's still not empty. Yeah. Sorry, when you're Chair, we have a, 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 an agenda item 36. Which looks at the cleaning of London Road. Yes, it does. Um, are, are we going to? But when we sort of um, started to mention, yeah, item, perhaps we should do, hang do on. We want to, do we want to hang on, or we could bring that agenda do item want, forward. Do you want to bring it forward? Yeah, we could do that. We, well, I'd be happy with that because I think they're yes. interlinked, aren't they? I think they are. So we'll yes. bring that it's forward. Not, it's not the only okay but it's a major three. Thirty-six forward. Yeah. So just ask for you, um, Janet. Are hmm. uh, because that obviously Norse is now 
it's now in house for these suffer. Mm. So say for example, the cleaning uh, of, with a big brush of the town centre, mm. which is kind of like a vision. We keep saying, can it be done more regularly? Is it now with East Suffolk in-house yet, team? End of June. That's the end of June. Mm. So by the end of June, from the end of June, is that when it is, Janet? Oh, I when think they, yes. Right. Yeah. So if we keep an eye on it, because to me, um, you know, I I was wandering up with the when I was at the front of the parade, I was a marshal on Saturday, and I was aware of, you know, that because you're looking at the floor a lot more basically because you, 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 I was doing the health and safety to make sure that nobody mm. crowded in, and some parts of it are really really grubby, and when we're trying to promote the town in all its glory on the you know via people were filming, yeah. there were. Holiday, you know, holiday magazine services from all over the place. Do you mean particularly sort of like the Kitty Wake and no, Seagull? No, it's the Kitty Wake um, bit. It was mess. the mess. No, it's the, the gold. It's, it's, it's dreadful. It's the floor and the rubbish, you know, the paper and that side of it is gone. Yeah. Um, And the other part of the town is the weeds that are all around the base. Of the, you know, you should go up, um, I think, right, you know, you should go out of the town on the left. Those trees, there's just, I know we, you can have nice poppy, you know, some of the poppies look quite nice, but it just looks unkempt and uncared for. As far as nest, you mean there, do you? No, as you Catfic go, way. Cat, 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 oh, that cat was, way. Yeah. yeah, I've actually been to Cat Point. I went on the thing. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, it just looks unkempt mm. and uncared for. And, and I think that's the kind of thing that puts people off. They mm. think, hang on, why haven't they done that? Why haven't they tidied that up? Yeah. Good, good yeah, it really John, annoys me. Yeah, and you I get used to it. That's what annoys me. This, this issue sort of arose from a discussion at the last meeting. Mm. I think it was Graham that was here. Is it Graham Parker? Graham yes. Parker. Yes, yes, it Parker. was Graham. Yeah. Um, May uh, raised it and I sort yeah. of kicked in about the uh, the seats in the town centre. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, just, just I know we are all aware of this, but people may not be, but it's important for the climate to have. Town centres that are amenable, yes. and also because town centres are the, are like the hub of public transport as well. Yes, and this is so. so having pleasant places, exactly, and, and green places is, yes. is really good. Now, I did a survey of the seats, the benches in the town centre, and oh, I right. found eighty percent of them pretty grubby. Yes. Only 20% of them probably really get used that much, to be honest. Yeah. And 40% of like, or half that 80% are really bad. And they just don't get clean. No, sticky. never. And that, and that. No. When you say and, grubby, they sort of, yes. do you mean, well, what do you have? It's, it's just so uh, sticky. Yeah. Okay. And, and you just don't really want to sit. No. Exactly. No. And so it, it's, yes. it's not good. And then, of yes. course, we've mentioned, you know, the, the, uh, the sort of the, uh, the paving is not. Mm. No. no. So, so this is, um, you know, this is a say social spaces. It's very important. So, yes. I mean, progressing it, we're going to raise it with East Suburb, aren't we? Mm. Yeah. And, and totally for a better agree. clean regime. Yeah. I mean, I don't really want them to rip out benches that are good. I just need clean because I know exactly. sometimes exactly. people go over the top. And yeah. Yeah. And replace it. Just need mm. yeah. um, proper cleansing. Thank anyway, you. that's that's my my um, thoughts. And the other thing is, I just mentioned, you get the seats in the town centre. Mm. But if you go to North in Utah or the Tower, where's the public spaces to sit? Mm. Where is it? Is there? There's no spaces there. You, know, you have to go into an eatery. You have to go yeah, into. Well, a that's, would you want to? Well, that's the idea, isn't it? It's yeah. the idea. It's the we in town centre have got. You know, you can spend time mm. socialising. Yeah, it's quite worse. Just, yeah. um, yeah. just for the record. Yeah. Um, Debbie, hello, Richard. The only thing I say about the weeds around the trees is that <clears throat> possibly they've been left there intentionally for the insects. Possibly. So if that is the case, perhaps I can't you know, we need to get lots of these little signs saying, you know, excuse the weeds, we're feeding the bees. So yes. if they're everywhere, then people will know why it's been left. Yeah. And it hasn't been left just because it's, the council can't yeah. be bothered, mm. but it's yeah. been left for a reason. Yeah. So, 
maybe I, you know maybe some need a bit more cleaning than tidying than others but yeah. i do think it's crucial that we don't chop yeah. down it's yeah. just for the sake of it oh no 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 Chair, no. just to say no, I, i'd agree with that Wendy I, wasn't I, oh, fine. Sorry, sorry, right. sorry. i have to say deborah the weeds that sonia is talking about are not that important for the environment they are just scrubby old things so that looks all they right. haven't been carefully cult they haven't been planted they're not mm. wild flowers they are weeds no, but and they have very very little benefit to insects um and they look a mess around the trees they they do need look at you can actually could actually dig out the rubbish that's there and put some nice wild flowers there instead yeah. mm -hmm. it is neglect it isn't so the mind the weeds we're feeding the bees is actually become something of a bit of a joke in lower stock because basically it's it is neglect it isn't if you want to grow wild flowers you you want a mixture you want to attract mm -hmm. all the pollinators and I've not seen, just the bees I've seen people do and that. what what do it properly, do it properly mm -hmm. but they haven't what they've done is they said it's okay we don't have to bother with that we say oh no we stick sign except if you wanted one of those signs you'd have to buy them in lower stock you can't they don't come for free with East Suffolk anyway the cleaning, John, I think your mm -hmm. point is absolutely right. Centre of town is a social space. And yes. I've got, I didn't send to everyone, I sent to Paul my picture of the bench outside mm -hmm. Tesco's, which is absolutely disgusting. Mm -hmm. And there was one woman sitting on it and I wanted to sit down and I just thought, I'm not sitting there. It's filthy and it has got worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think it was Sonia first. Yeah, and, and just, just a couple of things, just to concur with, with what Councillor Brooks said. To me, I totally agree with having spaces. I, I have them in my own garden where I let it go wild and I've got seeds and wildflowers and things. What it is, is neglect. And, and what it's also, it's spread out. So it's the, they're now coming up underneath the stones, around the stones. And if you do it properly, it can look brilliant, but it's not, it's just been left. The other thing is, I, one of the things that I found really impressive when I went to Scotland, was the num I could not believe it because it was like some going back in time. Um, and I know it was the city, it was in Glasgow, but in the centre, they had areas where they had plants and, and, and letting the wildfires go. But somebody was going around and was actually wiping and cleaning the seats. You could see loads of people were there. Yes, you had stores around them. Yes, you had, and you had lots of artwork and all that. But the fact was, it was saying this space is for everybody to use. And this and they also had, you know, uh, public blues. And you, you felt, yes, I can spend time here. I'll feel comfortable and safe. And to me, unless you do that, people say to me, oh, I don't go into that stuff anymore because, it, you know, it just looks so neglected. And it's that mm -hmm. we've got to counter because business and if, if people are looking at businesses as well, they need to have people go into the town, but it is a space for everybody. Uh, and we need to make it far more welcoming and cleaning. It's a basic thing, isn't it? Yeah. To me, absolutely basic. Anyway, yeah. Thank I, you. I, Thanks, I, agree with, Debbie. I agree with all that. Um, I, the only thing I would say about weeds is that to me, weeds are natural flowers. You know, that yeah. they, you don't, you know, just for the fact that they don't look the way humans like them to look. If we're thinking about giving nature a seat at the table, yeah. you know, what does nature think about these weeds? Generally, nature would think, yeah, we can, you know, we've got the, the pollinators like we, I, my garden is full of weeds and people tell me it looks terrible, but I have lots of spiders, I have lots of bees, I have lots of insects that naturally are drawn to these natural Plants. You have a whole ecosystem. Yeah, essentially, yeah. yes. Now, okay, it's fair enough. If you want it to look pretty for humans, then yeah, we have to plant all these little pretty wildflowers, which is fine. Mm. Um, and as long as they do work for the pollinators, then you know that's okay. Mm. But I don't think that I think weeds are just flowers that are in the wrong place for humans, if you like. Yeah. I think I will come back to you, Wendy. I think the thing what John's mentioned there about cleaning is really important. Yes. We don't know. Uh, we don't know how often things are clean, do we? I mean, oh, anecdotally, never, I think anecdotally, answer. I do know in my own garden, which has lots of weeds and nice plants too, Wendy. Um, we have benches in our garden. Unless I get out there and clean them every sort of week, 
then they are covered in birds' nests because mm. we do have bird yeah. feeders in the garden. Yeah. So, I know. what yes, sort of? So. How often are you going to get the cows? How are they going to be able to clean them that often? That's my only worry because you'd have to be out there doing them every week, I think, to keep them clean. Well, Sorry, when you're coming. Yes, well, first of all, they never clean them. They, I've been bagging on about washing the town centre, and apparently there is a machine somewhere, and they could do it. They never do it. Never. They they rely on the rain to wash it away. They never actually physically wash the streets. In Spain, they wash them every day. The streets. Mm. It's filthy, the town centre. That's one point. My other point is on this, the weeds. Some of the plants that are growing randomly are actually invasive. They're not actually helpful. But also they take over so other nicer oh. wildflowers can't grow. But those yellow things that grow everywhere. Mare's tail. Actually... Mare's tail is a really... Yeah, <laughs> they actually prevent other wildflowers from We're growing. And we have to, so just the idea that all weeds are good isn't correct, I'm afraid. It isn't. You know, you do need management. And you otherwise you end up, like if we were to leave Gunton Warren, it would be covered with rhododendrons and Himalayan balsam. Both invasive, both really bad, stop other things from growing. And that is why you need management. You cannot just let nature take over because it, it's, you know, you've got to help it balance itself. We, you know, we humans live there as Certainly well. in the town centre. Yeah, oh, the town centre. There's no excuse. There really isn't. It's just basic stuff. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Invasive plants don't have a place. So, yeah. yes, I agree with that. Yeah. Janet. Yeah. yeah I, I, nature is very important. And we should also always consider it. But we need to find a compromise because we also need to create a good impression of the town. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, it's a trade. Yeah. 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 yeah good point. Thank you. Um, any other I have been, sorry, can I just very quickly say, yeah, I'm going to say this in a public meeting because I have been told it. And so therefore, let's get it in the minutes. Lois of Vision have told me that they have got a significant sum of money and they are buying or getting made some really nice big wooden planters for the town centre. Now I've been told that and it is a significant amount of money. It's not a few hundred quid, it's quite a few thousand quid. So let's minute that and let's see if it happens. Okay, but is that, is that an official? Um, I was told it. Not by who, by whom? Danny Steele. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. He is low um, vision. Yes, that's true. And um, the new woman was there as well. So that what Angela Gray, mm. both of them were there okay. in an informal meeting and they told me that. So I'd like that in the minutes, and then in six months we can look at it and see if uh, it happened. Okay, so if we were going to also bring in 36, which was the consider cleaning arrangements for London Road, that law, what, how do we want to take that forward? Who, would, who do we want to send that to? Because we're considering it, we're, not, we're saying there is none. Is that what we're saying? Cleaning arrangements. To consider we're well, bringing we're bringing 36 forward well i think maybe maybe the chat maybe this we have to have a we have to maybe write a very strong mm. letter to east suffolk from the council maybe this has to go on the full council agenda as well saying that we are thoroughly fed up with it well in a better way you know basically mm. we're sick to the back teeth of the filth in the town center and it needs cleaning urgently mm. that's what i'd say but nicer mm. Yeah. So a, a message proposal. from the whole council. Yeah? Yes. yeah, I propose we send it that we put this to full council and see if they'll support it. Okay, thank you, Wendy. Uh, anyone like to second that or comment? Yeah, on that? I'd, I'd second yeah. it. I, okay. I think it's really important. Okay, and uh, we'll vote on it then, please. That everybody. <laughs> yeah, that is everybody. Could that um, take place, please, um, Taylor and Lauren? Thank you. I wonder if, Lauren, um, it's possible for you or Taylor, if you could maybe draft something that, uh, that we could actually put to full council yeah. as a proposed letter. Could be read out, perhaps, yeah. yeah. If that's, if you've got time. Yeah, that should be fine. It's next week, so that's time enough to put a draft together. Thank you. Thank you for that, everybody. 30. 
to receive an update regarding liaison with Peter Ronda's MP on Lois Gov's blue flag status. Have we had anything from Peter? Again, Chair, I've not had any update. Okay. I should have grabbed him on. He was at the first light festival. I he should was. have grabbed him there. Nazima was hanging on to his coattails. So I wonder if she managed to ask him. Um, okay, so we can't take that any. We can't take that forward then. Uh, Thirty-one to consider the town council's ethical ethical stance regarding its energy supply. That's another one we looked at before. Any news on that? The last meeting that's requested for staff to collate whatever that's been yeah. So I'll just be working on that with Shona. Okay. So the last meeting was not even two weeks ago. No, so we haven't had time to. Yeah. Hopefully, July is when we have something ready for you. Thank you, Taylor. We'll do that next time. 32, to receive an update on provision of water bottle refill stations and refill schemes. Do you want to speak on this one, Wendy? Just very briefly, that I did notice, because I know that we had thought about using low stop vision, and they have actually now got a, a post, haven't they, out that um, asks shops and businesses that are in, you know, would they be willing to kind of have a sign in the window? Thank you, Wendy. Uh, Sonia? Yeah, because did it... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, you go ahead. Well, I was just in connection with the water the bottle refill station as opposed to the refill schemes, because we were mm. two separate things. Yeah. yeah. Um, would it be possible, I wonder, to contact, Ang not Anglian Water, Essex and Suffolk Water, mm -hmm. who provide the water in those sort and see whether they would actually be prepared to put these water bottle refill stations around town. Because they've got such bad press at the moment because of all the sewage they're dumping everywhere. Yes. They might actually want a bit of And all positive. the money they're paying their shareholders. I think it's Anglian yes. Water dumping the sewage, isn't it? Anglian Water of the sewage. Yeah, yes. the other way around. Yes, the yeah. other way around. Okay. They even so, once, even so, it's still good publicity. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it could be possible they might do it because in Scotland, Scottish Water have done it all over Scotland. Yeah. So yeah. you know, contacting a water company might be mm. um, very good idea. They might pay for it. Yeah. Um, when, um, just very briefly. Oh, sorry, Sonia. Sorry, sorry. sorry. I'm just going to say sorry, that can... uh, Essex and Suffolk Water do have done some very good things. They did. They gave everybody. You could have a water bar, you could have mm. taps changed to make them more water friendly. Yeah. They gave out um, new LED lights. So they, they do, so that so kind of thing you're it. thinking is, I think it's the kind of thing they could mm. yeah, there possibly. Is a, there's already an it's engagement. Worth, certainly worth, yes, yeah, anyway. there is. Sonia. Just a couple of things. One, over the weekend, because I, I was a volunteer uh, at first sight, right from early on at the parade, right the way through to the end of the day, and just to say that I was asked at least three times by random members of the public who weren't planted there <laughs> as to, oh, where can we fill our water bottles up? Um, now, one of the water bottle, or one of, there is a tap which beach hut users can use along the seafront, mm -hmm. but we weren't anywhere near that. And I, I thought to myself, well, you know, we should be able to and this was discussed, wasn't this, at the last meeting, in the meeting before, there should be somewhere along the seafront that directs people, you know, with a big sign saying, Have you, you know, it's, I know it's not our land, we could put it somewhere, surely, or do a liaison with these soccer council to say, you know, we, two responsible councils have joined together to create a situation where you can refill your, your water bottle or your whatever you you've got with it I mean it it shouldn't be that difficult to do that and people were kind of looking around for it so yeah. that that was the first thing um and the other thing is when we do eventually do this I think we need to be up front with with advertising and saying it's the lowest off town council initiative. and it, it's our yeah, yeah it's our initiative so that we actually show and if it's the two councils doing it well it's the two councils but I, I, <laughs> I just feel as though we need we need to show that we are mm -hmm. On the front foot, yeah. yeah. Um, Debbie. what you were saying, Sonia, I experienced that personally. Oh, right, <laughs> yeah. In that we had our water bottles, we ran out of water, yeah. And apparently, on the map, there were three places, yes, that you could fill it water bottles. 
And one of them was supposedly in Kensington Gardens. So we looked for this place and we couldn't find it. Uh, we ended up asking the little cafe there if they'd fill the water bottles for us, which yeah. they did. They did. Yeah. The next time we had the same problem, we had to buy plastic bottles of water. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. So it was just, you know, and I thought, you know, we've been trying all this time. Yeah, we have. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there is a tap um, that I used uh, now that I've closed the, on the Art Deco, you know, near the uh, Miami Hut, uh, near the Claremont Pier. We used to be able to fill them up in the end to end loose, but and sinks when they've shut those down, uh, which would have been ideal to use. But there is one nearby um, the little cafe there as you come down the slope. There is a press button one so that it doesn't overflow or flood if, if people leave it on. Yes, there is. Well, they can't leave it on. Really. Yeah. So it's there, like there is one there, but that's yeah. very much local knowledge sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and of course, where I was, I was right up near East Point. Mm. Long way away. So we could do with a few. We could do with a few on there. Well, I think we have to be sympathetic towards cafes as well. Yes. But Saturday and Sunday they would have been extremely busy yeah. and people keeping traipsing in saying, "Yes, Can you fill my bottle up." For yeah, me? I can that's... understand that they haven't got the time for no. that. So we need to think of you know there are other ways of doing it. I don't think we can start expecting on a very very busy, which it was incredibly busy. Well, we did so actually buy food. Yes. Yeah. So, so you, you know. But it's not always. They have to be sympathetic. That's a one off. That's a one off. That's a that's a, that's a one off. Yes. I mean, maybe you know, when it's less busy, they wouldn't mind. Yeah. But in busy times, you have to be understanding. I think they've got business to run. Mm. Of course. Yeah. Thank you. But if we had the water refill station, yeah, they wouldn't, you, they wouldn't need yeah. to. No, you can direct <laughs> them yeah. to that. So yeah. is so your idea then? Would you like to make a proposal on that, um, Debbie, about the Essex and Suffolk water? Yes. So I propose that we contact, well, the staff, if they can, contact Essex and Suffolk Water to ask whether they would be interested in providing water bottle real refill stations around Lois Thank you. Yes. Really good. I'd second that. Yeah. Certainly agree. Can we have a vote on that, everybody, please? Yeah. <laughs> That's everybody. Is that something that the officers could do for us, please? Yeah. We'll contact them and see. See what they say anyway. <laughs> it's worth a try. <laughs> And just say there'll be lots of kudos in for them. They could have their name. Sorry? They could have their name on it. Their well, of course. As well as well, yes. 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 Well, they yeah. will. Yeah, they, they'll be working in partnership. Well, if they provide it, it should really be. Well, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Okay. So we'll move on to 33. To receive an update regarding advice on the use of chlorine as a risk, risk management measure. Well, you have done this step. Storage. Well, we I don't know. We, this, we were we getting some further, on it. further advice, I think. Is there more advice? The advice was that in tiny, in small quantities, it's not damaging to health and isn't damaging to plants. And we discuss it every meeting. So essentially, this item will be able to change now because with the advice that we received, it was essentially, you know, as long as it's a minimal amount, it should be okay to go ahead. So I've contacted NWL, um, who do all of our um, water maintenance, looking after it, that kind of thing, and ask them um, sort of for initial advice on how we now take this forward. Uh, so their advice at this point would be to the water butts to insulate and keep a lid on them, make sure it's sited in a shady area. Um, don't allow hoses to be attached to them because that will generate the aerosols, which I believe will then be the leaching yeah, issue. That's right. Um, so it's for filling water in cans only. And the only risk to the public would be um, if the pool exceeds that um, dosage from the Legionella bacteria, but other than that, it should be fine. So I'll just be speaking with them now to see about um, where we can put them. I know I think Kensington Gardens was what we suggested as the, yeah. the first place yeah. to go to, and then also just to check with them on costs in terms of them having it as part of their annual checks. So that's the next stage that we'll be going to. Then I'll be discussing that with Shona when she's back in the office. Thank you. So a lot of work clear. Just the briefly, Kensington Gardens are desperate to have a a water yes, that's what Taylor said. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. desperate. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they can be First informed that it's yeah. working, it'd be happening. They'll be pleased. They'll be pleased. They'll be very pleased. Yeah. Anybody else on that? On but no. 34 then to receive an update on the Earth Protector activities undertaken by the schools 
and East Suffolk College. Was this so something you were doing, Rachel? Let me just change that to East Coast College. Yes. 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 I was going to create a whole new entity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've done that before. And all the schools as well. Yeah. Yeah. East Coast. Um, yeah. So in summary, college has been trying to get out to primary and high schools around aspects of environment and science, etc. Um, school strikes haven't helped this year because obviously teachers now play and catch up and don't want to lose half a day or a day at all. Um, so we're going to have some plans for the new academic year. One group we're trying to engage at the moment is the homeschooled pupils because they are losing out left, right and centre with careers advice and also hands on learning. So we're going to try and do an activity in the Energy Centre in July for those pupils. Um, we've commissioned somebody to do a VR around understanding your carbon footprint. So every student at college next year will do that as part of the tutorial. We've managed to get the lowest off train station in it as part of the footage as well. Fantastic which is good. Um, we're exploring a national lottery bid with heritage organisations and wildlife organisations in the area. Um, you can put in for up to a million pounds. So we're working on the theory work back together rather than stand alone. Mm. So it's more around that nature awareness piece. Um, but one thing, I don't know where we want to mention this, but just going back to the first slide, can we look for a gender right for next? If I don't say it now, I'm going to forget. Mm -hmm. for the next meeting can we look at event applications to the council for mm -hmm. how we can inform east suffolk council of big events how they can try and reduce the amount of plastic yeah 100%. because it was really noticeable at first mm -hmm. line i mean yeah. we gave out 500 water bottles but the amount of people who are walking about Says she with a Dr Pepper bottle. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you just that's just to, to uh, ignore that bit. <laughs> that's just you can pull that for an example of what people yeah, are doing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if there are big events, yes, I agree. I, I there's said, nothing in the temporary um, event. My wife and I noticed that as well. There's and nothing. on the beach, there was so many of those little plastic shock things. There's there's was, there was one guy going around picking them up, mm. volunteering, yeah. picking them up. Um, yeah, thank you for that. So sorry, Rachel, really, that bit, no, that's no, really no, that's great. Did you have anything else for me? No, it's, just, it? it's trying to link in of educating the community yeah. and individuals as much as we can. Yeah. And if you can do that through an event, through a website, through posters, mm. through water bowl stations, whatever, that's what we need to do. Yeah, well, thank right. you for all the work you're doing. It's fantastic. So most of that's going to start in September, you think? Yeah, yeah so we've also got some funding off Equinor to do carbon literacy in schools as well. So and that's work. is that primary schools and so that will be predominantly high schools. Right. We're going to change our college students up to be carbon literacy ambassadors, so we can roll out. Yeah, what about that? Uh, they can come and sign. They, they'll that. be joining this committee that's soon. That. Um, thank you for that. That's all right, Sonia. Yeah, a couple of things. One, first lights remit is over the next three years, and one of the conditions of our funding from the Arts Council is this idea of having um, the climate emergency at its heart and the environmental issue, because there's there's going to be a group of people from the community involved within the First Light Remit. Now, I'm the rep on there. I think, yes, I am still the rep on there. Um, I'll ask at the next meeting what practical things are going to happen as a result of the need to have this environmental remit mm. as part of its arts funding can, uh, council funding right and the second thing is um and i won't name the person um some of your students from east coast college from the foundation group go mm. to uh lord summer Layton's, um uh, they go to lord summer Layton's gardens yeah and they also go to coldcock hall and they go to ringsfield mm -hmm. Um, and there they they are learning a huge amount about climate change. Um, the Mow and Grow group. Yeah. Oh, because, nice. Yes. Mow and right. Grow, I like it. Because this is, <laughs> uh, it's, this is a, uh, uh, declare an interest, this is, this is my, my husband goes there with them. And they are learning a huge amount, particularly from the head gardener of at Summer Lane, all about how the climate is affecting the plants, the seasons and everything. So there's a huge amount going on, which, mm. um, yeah, that, that uh, 
Mm. I'm learning via my my husband coming back and telling me what mm. what they've all been told. So they're yeah. you know on a very practical level. So that's a really we good thing got, that you're doing. Yeah, we also got some sustainability development fund running off um, Department of Education. Yeah. So part of that is we've actually committed. There's a group called SOS which works with students. Yeah. So we've commissioned them for ten thousand pounds worth of work next year to upskill our students to, or else then going to challenge the colleges. Yeah. approach to sustainability create them as champions but also they then take it out to their peers right so yeah so some really but it's good... not quick enough because nothing's yeah. going to quick enough oh, well, no, no, no. But the, but at least you're getting children engaged but, yeah. yeah but the students well, they're challenging yeah. us more than ever yeah i'll yeah. come yeah. into you next one yeah but, but it's this wonderful say, yeah, story that we've got young finish. people because <laughs> i'm always conscious we haven't got yeah. enough young people no before. and the students um, I'm coming to you. I've been really right. good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Wendy. Um, just to say, Rachel, we were chatting before you came. First of all, First Light had the opportunity. They were supposed to have done something ecologically minded for this festival, and they didn't. They they wanted the town council, they were contacted because they were going to do it, but they didn't get it together. And it's really disappointing to hear how bad it was. However, we were talking before you arrived about the possibility of um, a younger person maybe joining this committee. Mm -hmm. And we don't know... Um, what the perfect person. I mean, if you... Yeah, if you know the perfect person, it would be great to have a young person. Mm -hmm. to, don't you think? Yeah, to join this committee. Because they sound like it's great, you know, to know yeah. that young people are actually involved and they're doing their own carbon footprint. You yeah. know, they can, they should, they're they leading the way, aren't they? So one, we've got a couple of students that are really interested in leading on the SOS project. So I will propose when they come back in September that I bring them and introduce them. And Excellent. Them. How old are they? So they would be 17, 16, 17. Um, we need to find out. Yeah, you know, we need to find out through the office yeah. whether we would be able to have a cooperative member who was 17 years old. If not, I'll find one of the same team. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't I, I can't see any reason why we can't have I can't see any reason. Mm -hmm. And why we can't expand to having, you know, uh well, we've got John and two, why we can't have four members of the yeah, public. Yeah. It's an emergency after all. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. I wasn't sure who's first, whether it was Sonia or yeah, Debbie. Just, just to say as well, Debra's something had I, I'd forgotten that um, last week I replied again to somebody from East Coast College. Students had written in to me and um, I've copied in um, the, the staff and I've asked, um, shown a look at which committee we need to send this information to. Yeah. They've done a brilliant list of things that they'd like to see improvements in the town. So it's kind of to do with this committee, but it's other ones as well. Mm. So it was literally last Wednesday that I replied back and thanked them for, for it. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it might be, um, you know, no student was named there, but the, the tutor who sent me it, um, I said I'd get back to them with some information. So I think that's maybe the, the tutor is, I can link that with them as well. Yeah, mm. okay, I'll let you know yeah. after the meeting yeah. if you like, yeah. And yeah. as far as the young person, I know at the beginning of the meeting it mentions 18 year olds to do with filming, doesn't it? So it's possible, yes, yeah. yes, it has to be over 18 because of the filming. Well, no, because they could, if that's a rule, then they just sit out of the shot of the no, that's the camera. People under the age of 18 are uh, not wishing to be filmed, oh, yes, yeah. yeah. But I think they can be if they wish. To be. Yes, you get yeah. schools. Yes, yeah. you get. Yeah. In, in some situations, in school, there's some children who don't want to be in the photographs. Yeah. Yeah. You get parental consent. Yeah. Yeah. Their choice. It used to be parental consent. Yes. Over, well, 16 to 18. Yeah. That's now being lax. So as long as they're 16, they can that's consent themselves. Right. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. I mean, that would be wonderful if we could. Mm -hmm. But you say you've got two names. Potentially, yeah, because we're, we've now gone out for our student union, of mm. which there is a student ambassador, mm. one lowest of one at the other. Mm. Oh, great. And they all, they all challenge us, will they? Oh, <laughs> God. <yeah. laughs> Not too much, I Wendy. I would <laughs> like to propose that this committee um, asked Rachel to approach these two young people mm. and to invite them to join well, what would be event. either? I'm setting myself up here, aren't I? <laughs> no. It, what quite. would be really good is over the next few months, obviously when the schools return, if we could find willing young people 
that could even be high school or even primary school. And we hosted a lower stock climate pupil committee where they, because not, not being funny, a seven year old can bring the most wackiest mm -hmm. ideas. Yeah, yeah. Awesome as well. no, and literally, yeah. I could host a young person's forum that I could then feed back into here. Yeah. Marvellous. Yeah. Even if it's only four times yeah. a year, it doesn't matter, does it? No, it's, it's fantastic. fantastic. Right, yeah. Fantastic. I worked with it. I worked yeah, we had to do that as a formal proposal. Yes, you've just made it. Right, I got absolutely support what Rachel has just said. <laughs> I have South End's a great idea. Yeah, right. I was, I, you didn't see it, Rachel, but we had a, a young person, a 10 year old, who did an incredible lip yeah. pick after some yeah. very naughty teenagers has had a very wild party and left loads of rubbish, picked it all up. It's just a fabulous, you know, they, they, there are lots of really great kids well, out there. Future, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they are. Absolutely, they are. Yeah. Okay. And they so, can make a difference. I mean, I, in primary school, we had a girl who was so environmentally um, progressive that she managed to change the school dinner system because of what she said. So, oh, wow. You know, so in Parliament, it can happen. Oh, we have to start singing these children's praises, yeah. don't well, we? Well, yeah, if they are the future and they're the ones that are going to provide yeah. us with ideas and challenge, so... Okay, okay. okay, thank you for that. Yes, yeah, uh, so I made a proposal. Yes, yeah, so we've got a vote on it. Nobody second well, it. I'll, I'll second it because, yeah. I'll, yes, I'll be second it. Last week, there we go. Charlotte, I can see. Cool. Yeah. yeah, all right. Yeah. Okay, then, so we need to vote on that uh, Wendy's yeah. proposal yeah. for Rachel. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Seconded by, um, only that's unanimous, that's everybody. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. But we would appreciate if you could check on the age. Yeah, I'll still check. Yeah, yeah. There, there was a list of things they said. Mm. I mean, just going back, I know this is not an agenda item, although it's been brought up. <laughs> the plastic free thing is something that we should have at every every event that most of town council are involved in, not just at <laughs> first light. So, I mean, that's something we should be looking to do. Yeah. This committee should look to um, enforce, really. Yeah. Debbie? As part of the Earth Protector Town, um, in involvement, we have to deal with something on plastic free communities. So I think we have to get 40 organizations involved or something. It's quite a major thing, but that needs to be carried forward over each um, agenda, I think, so we can move that forward. Yeah. So it, it is on there anyway. Yeah. Should be. Good. Ongoing. Thank you. Right, we move on to 35. Oh, it's huge in schools. We just met all your, she's got 14 schools on the college. So we've done it. <laughs> Take that one off. 35, to receive an update on public engagement with the climate and ecological emergency through climate change mural launch and the Kitty Wake Partnership Open Day. That was you, Deborah. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to, to um, express how. The community is starting to come together to talk about the climate and ecological emergencies. And these two things that happened a few weeks ago definitely involved a lot of the lower sort of community. The, the mural launch, we leaf, leafleted 300 of homes in the areas of the murals and invited some of them to join the launch. There was an article on BBC, BBC Suffolk about it. It was covered on BBC Radio that the participants were, were um, interviewed on BBC Radio Suffolk. Mm. Uh, Peter Alders came along to look at the murals. Um, and it was followed by a showing of The Old Machine, which is a, a film about the fossil fuel industry. So it was a successful day of community engagement with the climate crisis. And I think that was you know, very positive. Mm. Also, the Kitty Wake Partnership had an open day. Um, they took people around the town talking about the various the Kitty Wake um, nesting sites. Um, I went on the morning walk and there were about 15 participants. They, they gave us binoculars, so we had binoculars to look at all the Kitty Wakes and look at the sites. Did you say 15? Um, 15, 15. I think in the morning there was about 15 to 20 and there was an afternoon walk as okay. well. Yeah. Um, so that was a successful day of community engagement with the ecological crisis. Also, the first light, um, although they fell down on their waste side of things, they promoted the uh, biodiversity and ecological uh, biodiversity and climate crisis through art, yes. through science. Very good. CFAS were there. The UEA yes. UEA climate um, 
were there. Yeah. The Natural History Museum were there. There are a lot of people yes. talking about the climate mm. and the ecological yeah, emergency. Is, so I would say that First Light did a lot of work in promoting Lowestoft as a as a leader, if you like, yeah. in those in those areas. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I'd agree with that wholeheartedly. Yeah. But, okay. Um, but well, always Wendy? well, I'm not mentioning them. Um, I feel the Kitty Wake partnership, I was kind of disappointed that because I felt that there were mixed messages which they acknowledge the RSPB and the Summit Wildlife Trust acknowledge there are mixed messages coming out from uh, some of the members of the partnership. And that's worrying. That was very worrying to me. I was watching, I was talking to somebody who seemed to almost be saying that 50 weights are a pest and they've got to be going out of town and advocating using netting and spikes. And he, I think it's something they're really going to have to get to grips with that they're actually... Who was saying that, Wendy? About? I'm not mentioning it. It's oh. in public session. Um, I'll mention it in confidential session if we have it. Mm. But I just feel, and they agree, that they absolutely have to get the people who are part of the partnership have to be saying the same message, you know, and then and currently they are not. Okay. And that is going to create problems. It's well, not so, they need more members of the community, basically, to be part of it. At the moment, they've got one member of the community, and that's just not good enough. No, I mean, they need, you know, people need to, they need to, people need to know what they're talking about. You know, people are saying things like, it's all right, because they're going to be using the Kitty Wake hotels. Well, no, they're not. You know, it's the first thing, they're not. It's, it's all sorts of misinformation that needs sorting out. And uh, okay. I raised okay. it with them and maybe whoever becomes our Kitty Wake representative from the town council will take that board as well. So that we're all singing from the same, yeah. not him, she book whatever sheet you want yeah um anyway. sorry when i mentioned the first light I, oh i forgot please. i admitted rachel's tent the stem tent and that was yeah. excellent there were young people in there. yeah there were young people in there building replicas of um wind turbines, wind turbines. Yeah. And, solar and panels. It, yeah and it involved so many people didn't it i mean they were it so engaged nuts. it was nuts yeah but on the kitty weight, our tent, as you went out, so Siemens were taking children down to the sea to do floating wind turbines. And we were having conversations about what do you think that is over there mm. and the reasons for it. So our tent for kitty weights and the yeah, conversation well. <laughs> had not been perfect. But yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, Andy's not here because he, he obviously would have spoken about the kitty weight. I'm, I'm pleased to see the second uh, nesting station is up. However, I've not really heard whether they've been that successful. Well, so they far. won't be, Paul, because yeah. the thing is, On they are. So, so just to, to be clear, Pity Wakes returned to their original yes. nesting yes. site. So there was never in any intention those Pity Wake hotels would be taking the Kitty Wakes out of town. <laughs> what they are hoping, but they have no guarantee, is that the younger birds may go there might use them mm. the chance of it happening this year are not that strong maybe next year yeah i just my question was has any birds nested there i mean other birds could no use, well it, other it, seabirds could i don't know if they have i, I the don't girl, know if they have no girl sign on because the, the girls the, may just take the, over them <laughs> no they the girls want to be in town when well, they get the birds yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah they like the chips but anyway so um Yes. Um, sorry, John. Yeah, on, on um, first line, it's um, disappointing we weren't there as, as, a, as a, yeah. an environment. We, we tried to, to yes. get that going in the last minute, but we couldn't yeah. get the, the no. necessary yeah. backup with can, the posters and things. Can, can yeah. you proceed with the posters um, so that we are available for any other uh, events that we can quickly mobilise? Mm -hmm. No, that's um, a good point. Um, well, we have our Pride event coming up, don't we? In August. Um, Lauren and uh, Taylor, yeah. there was the request from Michael and Chris. We're going to try and get some posters together for us. I don't know if you were aware of that. Yeah, no, no, I appreciate that. Would it be possible to still get those posters prepared for other events in the future? Yeah. 
Thank you. Do I have to have an official proposal for that? Can I just ask? Uh, yeah. Oh. Oh, I can post, I, can sorry. I um, I've sent the posters through to them, but I wasn't sure whether the format of the posters was sufficiently sufficient for them to be blown up. I didn't know whether if they were blown up, they'd lose their focus. Okay. So perhaps they can let us know. Perhaps technical stuff. Perhaps we can yeah, get let us know whether they will work. Hang on, Rachel's first one. I think if we're going to look at doing any events, we need to consider not just the message, but what is going to get people to the area to have a conversation with. So what has been done? Are we going to have a forum of let's listen? And what do you want done? But it's going to have to attract families. So the biggest learning point from the weekend was if you really want to engage at every level, have activities for littlies, mm. yes. so conversations with adults yeah. Yeah. and the older generation. So that's where you're going to get impact. Mm. Yeah. And that's what you were doing in your tent. Mm. Yeah. I can yeah. still think of holding up a window. But <laughs> <I can't speak. laughs> um, really? Well, obviously, this is Rachel's area, her expertise. Yeah. So I think on... Don't you dare wait. <laughs> no, 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 no. All I was going to say was that we listened to your advice yeah. very strongly yeah. in terms of what kind of information yeah. we're going to put out. We listened to you. But also, if information, Deborah's information can't be... But the information is there. And our staff can work on the layout oh, okay. and what it looks like. They, as long as the information is, uh, is there, yeah. Yeah. they can actually make it look yeah. Yeah, because, good. Debbie? Yeah, because I, I took those two posters. One was from the State of Nature um, site, and that was something that, that was done in 2019. And it was a group of um, organisations that got together, including the RSPB and various other organisations, and they did a report on the state of nature in the mm. UK. One of the posters I took from there. Mm. So I think anything we use, we have to reference these, these places they came mm. from. Mm -hmm. The other one was part of the IPCC. It was, it was a, an infographic that had been developed through the IPCC report. They'd taken information from the IPCC, IPCC report, mm -hmm. um, AR6, which is one of the reports, and they basically turned it into a graphic. So again, the IPCC or that, that, that yeah. organization. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, yes. And I did have the references on the bottom of the thing. So we've got to keep those there, basically. Yeah. That's yeah. why. Yeah. I think your point, John, was that we said we'd have some representation there just to say what we're trying to do on this committee, the things we're looking at the actions we're taking and find out from people like you said mm. Rachel what they would like to see us do a talking point a talk yeah. just as yeah, an engagement of some kind great ideas and yeah and I think doing things, but... really important that we do have that everywhere when we put on an event I think we should be there mm. and it, I think it'll be feeling our way through mm. a little bit but yes we will take your advice Wendy I'm wondering if maybe the town logo the lowest of town council logo could do with a Green. You know, have some green through it. A kind of, you know, mm. climate emergency type slogan mm. on it. You don't want empty words, though, do we? That's no. the thing. Empty, there's no. nothing worse than empty words. No. But, mm. uh, yeah. But you I, I'd like to have got some dosh. Why don't we ask them for some dosh to do some events? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you'd set a proposal? Yeah, go on then. <laughs> Danny, pop up. <laughs> um, to um, ask those top vision if they can yeah. perhaps help with some funding. I'll have a chat with Danny and the lives. Um, do we want to make that as a proposal? Are you going to second that, Wendy? Well, what am I saying? No, no, that? Rachel just proposed. What do you propose, Rachel? Well, Phil obviously still leads on the education side and the schools and the health. So if we kind of, if I went to Phil and basically said, have you got a pot of money in lowest off rising that can support some activities where we can link well-being and climate at the same time? You're more likely to get some dodge. So I'm quite happy to do that. Okay. Oh, I said I'll, second that. You're second. I'll yeah. second that. Yes. Can we vote on that, everybody? Yeah. yeah good. Then I'm going to do list is getting. For those people who don't know, I think yeah. Rachel's yeah. talking about Philades. Yeah. Philades, Rachel. Yeah. You mean? Yes. Yeah. Philades. Yeah. 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 He's uh. Our daughter. 
He's a bit like Danny Seals everywhere. That East Coast. That was voted through. Rachel was typing, I think. She voted for her. Okay. Yeah, AC. Sorry. Oh, I Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Great. Right. Oh, that's quite exciting. Yeah. Um. So it takes us to. Are we happy? We're finished with that one. Yeah, we've yeah. done 36. So we've done 36, and it's a, it's a receive an update from the Low Stock Kitty Lake Partnership Agreement. Andy has sent a little note. If, if you're happy, I will read out what he's said. He not, why has he not sent it to all of us? Well, it's, I think he was hoping to be at the meeting, but at the last minute he couldn't get here. So that's why he submitted this. If you're happy for me to read it out, go for it. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah. Uh, re item 37, which is where we are. I had commented a few times on a few items in the draft text, spoke of the LTC grant as if it's still to be paid when it has been paid. One paro ended. Uh, sorry, this is in a note form, so it's very difficult to well, read. Maybe, maybe Paul put it on the next agenda. Yeah, I think we And then to. we can actually, rather than. Yeah, because it's very difficult. I don't want to, to be miscon. You know, there is, can I just, because he's talked about the grant, there is some confusion over the grant because uh, what the grant actually went for, yeah. the paying for the lowest top down council, it is going to be clarified actually where our, what our money went to. I just believe it went to Groundworks to employ somebody because they, they, they weren't actually a constituted body, body of the Kitty Way Partnership. Yeah. So they weren't allowed to actually employ, they couldn't mm -hmm. then have the... Yeah. Right. The facilities that actually could... employ someone directly, so they had to use a third party, and that was Groundworks, which yeah. is why there are some people saying, "All oh, your money wasn't used to employ someone," but it was. Yeah, but it uh, had to be done in a roundabout. Well, that's my understanding, and that is actually right on what it's about. It's about that. It's about right. financial things, so we don't really need to go yeah. into that now. Um, but he did say he would do an updated report on the work of the partnership and the current situation, and that will be ahead of everybody before full council. That's okay. And that'll be to everybody, Wendy. So that's 37. Anything else on that, anybody? So 38, date and time of next meeting is Monday the 17th of July. Same time. That's suitable for everybody. Uh, 18 items for the next agenda. Any items for the next agenda? Don't worry if you haven't got them today. You can always send them in. Can't think of anything at the moment. No, you can always send them in. Oh, um, Deborah. One thing. Did we? So there's the climate, the the standalone Zoom meeting that we had on the eighth of June. Um, we made some changes or suggested changes to the climate emergency action plan. We don't seem yes, to we do. We don't seem to have discussed that, so well, it's not, yeah, that should be on the so next that should be on the That's an item for next time, yeah, yeah. We discussed the agenda format, this but time, we, but yes, we but you are right, we did, we did make some suggestions, yeah. didn't we? Mm. Yeah, I've got oh, I'll, I'll wait till we're off, okay. Oh. Well, if that's we've got no other agenda items, no. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending, and I would like to officially close the meeting. Thank you.